All right, welcome back. In the last video, we got our player movement and animations all set up. In this video, we're gonna start in on the code for the wall slide. So I'm gonna go ahead and close up the animation group for now. We will be coming back to it to add just a couple more things. And I'm going to right click and add another group. And I'm gonna call this wall slide. Actually, I'm gonna call this wall jump slash slide. Okay, you can call it whatever you want. Name is not important here. It's just so it is named to where you know what is in that group. Okay, I'm gonna go back over to the layout and zoom in. And I'm actually going to turn my snapping off for just a second, just so I can explain this. So here's our player and we can move left and right and jump. In the Mega Man game, one of the features is if you jump up on the wall, you can slide down. So one of the things that's happening there is we're jumping up there and our movement is slowed down to make it look like we are slowly sliding down the wall. And if we're not sliding down the wall, then we free fall to our normal falling speed. One of the other things I wanna look at is how we initiate and call on the wall sliding feature. If we are up against a wall and we jump, we don't want our wall slide to take effect as soon as we leave the ground because when we do, he'll get a one or two pixels off the ground and that part of the code will kick in and he'll already be sliding and it won't actually look like it takes effect at all. So I don't want you to be able to wall slide until you've reached the top of your jump, the apex of your jump, and then you start to fall. So that gives us something that we can check for. I'm gonna turn my snapping back on, put him back into place, hop over to the event sheet, and I'm going to add an event to wall jump slide group, and go get my player, scroll down to the platform behaviors, check if our player is falling. So it says true when the object is moving downwards, i.e. falling. Perfect, that's one check. So over here in our layout, if I jump up, and I slide down the wall, I don't wanna be able to call that code that makes us slide down the wall if I'm not up against a wall. If I'm just jumping in midair over here, I don't want our player to make it look like he's sliding down in middle of nothing. So we can check for that too. However, I don't want to check if we are near a wall to slide down unless our player is falling. We don't have to check for it until this becomes true in a way that we can make that only check for a wall is to make a sub event under this check. So if we select this whole block of code and hit B on the keyboard, that gives us a blank sub event. You see how it has indented. That means whatever we put in here will not check, will not run unless this has been proven to be true first. Okay, so let's double click this sub event, go to our player, Scroll down to platform, and we want to check is by wall. Test if object has wall to left or right. Perfect. This check will be for the left. And actually, we can check for both walls in the same event. So with only the event selected, we can control C to copy, control V to paste. So now we have both of these in the same block of code. And then I want to know if that wall is on the left or the right because right now it's saying the wall is on the left and the right. So if we right click in this space off to the left, make an or block, now it says has wall to the left or to the right. Either one, then we can move on. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the layout to continue my explanation. So once we jump to a wall, now we've checked, is it falling? Yes, okay, we can move on to the next piece of code, which was, is there a wall to the left or right? Yes, there's one to the right. So when we're playing a game like Mega Man, where we have this feature, we have our controls already set up. I don't want the player to just be next to the wall and be able to trigger this. I want them to have to do something that says, I want to jump off this wall. And we can use the controls we've already set up. 
I'm going to use what the original Mega Man game used, which was if you jump up and you are pressing that same direction, and then you continue to press towards the wall, he's going to grab onto the wall. And as soon as you stop pressing towards the wall, he'll free fall. So we can go back to our event sheet and set that up. So we're going to run another check, but I don't want this check to take place unless the platform is falling and there is a wall to the left or right. So we're going to do the same thing again. Let's click and select this whole block of code and press B on the keyboard. That gives us another sub event and we can double click to go into it, get our keyboard and we can check to see key is down and that's going to be the A key. So let's go ahead and select just that event, control C to copy, control V to paste and change this A to a D. So now we have A and D. We're checking if A and D is down. But again, like up here, I want to know if one or the other is down. Doesn't matter which one, just as long as one of them is down, then we can start writing some code in there. So I'm going to right click in this area, make an OR block. So now we know that our player is falling downward. There is a wall to either the left or the right and we are holding A or D down while we have a wall to one of those directions. So now we can start playing that wall slide animation. So let's add an action, go to our player, set animation to in between quotation marks, we want any wall slide. Okay, so now we can play that. And, and okay. So I have platform is to the left and or to the left. Well, that's not right. So let's change one of these, go into it and change one of them to the right. So now platform has wall to left or the right. And there we go. It plays our slide animation. When we are in the air, we're falling down. We have a wall to one of the sides and we're pressing the same direction as where that wall is, okay? Now, he's still moving the same speed of everything we set up over here in the behaviors values. So when we are switching over to our wall slide animation, I'm gonna stretch that out just a little, here we can change the speed in which the player is allowed to move. So over here in our platform behavior, we have max fall speed set to 1,000. That means that our player while free falling on screen can move up to a thousand pixels per second while he's in the falling action. I wanna slow that down. So let's add an action to our A or D down check and go to our player and go down to the platform and we want to change the maximum fall speed. So set max fall speed and it's a thousand. By default, I'm going to go way down to 200. So one fifth of the speed. And if we play that, now when I jump and fall, you see that we move way slower coming down. But the problem is now my maximum fall speed is still 200 pixels. See, he's, he looks almost like we have lag, but he's actually moving a lot slower than he was before. So we can make another check to make sure that we are set to a max fall speed of a thousand unless we are hugging a wall, sliding down the wall. So let's add an event to the wall jump slide group and go into our player, back down to the platform. And I wanna check is by wall again. And we're gonna say left. And I'm going to click on just the event part and press I on the keyboard. That's gonna invert it and say platform does not have a wall to the left. And then I'm going to control C to copy, control V to paste, and change that second one to the right. And I wanna check if either one of these are true. So I'm going to right click and make this an OR block. And now it's saying if there is not a wall to the left or not a wall to the right, then we can set our maximum fall speed back to a thousand. So let's add an action, get our player, scroll down to our platform and set max fall speed back to 1000. And I'm actually going to move this entire block of code 
just click and drag it all the way to the top of this group. That way, the first thing our code reads is we want the maximum fall speed to be 1,000 unless some of this other code starts to take place. Okay, let's save our project and play this and let's test it out. So we jump and we slow down when we're hugging the wall and if we don't, see he's falling a lot faster now, a lot faster than he is if he's hugging the wall. So jumping up and down and then jumping up and down and hugging the wall. Okay, so that is the wall slide. Pretty simple. And in the next video, we're going to set up the wall jump. Also pretty simple, but uh, a little bit more involved. But that is going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.